studied my last lecture have you ever gone my last lecture because that was an intro introductory part have you studied anything no not yet okay no problem no problem so today we'll be going to start a new uh, series that is review of agricultural policies okay 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 so in this uh, review of agricultural policy we will be reviewing the national agricultural policy then marketing price and trade policy then input use policies investment policies and institutional support to agriculture policies so these are the basic policies that are initiated by the government for overall development of the economy or overall development of the country as you all know that agriculture is the basic backbone of indian economy because of the basically few reasons first reason is are you getting my point am i audible clear yes because uh, first reason is agriculture constitutes the largest share of national country's national income uh, but by the time it was 55% but right now time by time it has declined to 18% then mm. more okay. than half of the indian workforce is employed in agriculture so the largest share in the agriculture in the gdp of the country is through the agriculture and second is the workforce is uh, more than half or more than 50% of the workforce is employed or people are employed in agriculture sector okay. then growth of these sectors not only contribute to the uh, country share but also lead to the livelihood and food and nutritional security of the vast population of the country then rapid growth of agriculture is essential not only to achieve the self reliance at national level but also to eradicate various problems of poverty in the country so because of these reasons agriculture is the backbone of our country and it is the core for socio economic development and progress of indian society right so if somebody want if somebody asks that why agriculture is very important the first reason is it is the backbone of our country because most of the population is engaged in agriculture second one is because uh, more than uh, because uh, the vast proportion of the income is coming from the agriculture sector and this is responsible for curing various country issues of food and nutritional security income security poverty levels and so etc then first policy which we will be discussing here is national agriculture policy so do you have any idea regarding agriculture sector any idea what policies no. can come emerge in agriculture sector what are the different policies that can be emerged or what are the issues that can be emerged in agriculture sector for the social welfare let's say if we want welfare of you as a person what policy do you initiate for yourself in terms of agriculture are you getting my point are you getting my point Mama. Okay, I shall be telling you. No worries. So, first one is the national agriculture policy is aimed to attain a basic growth rate of around four percent per annum. Means they have targeted that you have to grow at a rate. Agriculture must grow at a rate of four percent, so that, and this can be done if there is efficient use of the resources. if the soil is conserved water is conserved and biodiversity is conserved so to achieve the objectives of 4% growth rate there is was an initiative taken by national agriculture policy so it deals with a wide variety of matters like how to use agriculture inputs like land resource how to use how to undertake crop production fisheries aquaculture management livestock management how to develop the agricultural market where the farmers will be selling their products and 
Besides these agriculture, there are another issues, burning issues in the economy like gender empowerment, food and nutritional security, climatic changes, means biodiversity conservation. All these matters are to be underlooked by this name, National Agriculture Policy. So these all things are to be undertaken under National Agriculture Policy. Right? Yes, sir. Shall I proceed? Then second is agricultural price policy. So as the name indicate, it is in price policy. So it is to achieve the food sufficiency and to remove the major problems of agriculture sector related to improper and efficient use of natural resources. Means the farmer should get the proper price of their production. Agriculture price policy is to make food available to all the people at reasonable rate. So the main thing is the farmer should get at least what they are investing in the production. So there should be minimum price support policy means whatever cost they have incurred in the production, they should be getting in return in form of price. Whatever you have expend done expenditure, you will getting revenue. Then buffer stock and public distribution system means if you have a glut of production, if you have overcrossed a large production, then where to store that production? Because if you overflow it, then its price will decrease. So to maintain its price, you have to store that because the demand is less right now. So to develop the distribution system that is buffer stock or to create warehouses for the storage of their production and then releasing it when it is required in the market. So these are interrelated issues. Then policies for institutional reforms means those institutions that are undertaking the agriculture sector, how they are undertaking, what are the rules, regulations, forms in which they are helping the farmers. So first is national agricultural policy. Is it okay? Shall I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Then we have a broad objective. This national agriculture policy came on July 28th to 2000. And then we have a broad objective of national agriculture policy that is to accelerate the growth of agro business. Means agro industry development should be there. Then strengthening the rural infrastructure to support or uh, to support the faster agriculture development means the basic objective of national agriculture policy is to initiate the agro-based industries so that the things cannot be disrupted because of the raw material they should be processed or to focus on value addition then to generate employment these are the basic factors of national agriculture policy then to have a proper income of the farmer, then raise their standards of living, then discourage migrations to urban areas. If they get, if they are getting good form of income in village or rural areas through agriculture, why would they migrate to urban areas? So this is to discourage by providing better living standard in the rural areas itself. Then salient feature is the National Agriculture Insurance Scheme is to, under this National Agriculture Policy, the farmer has to ensure his crop to overcome the future risk, environmental risk, uh, climatic risk. Then price protection to the farmers that they should be getting a short price of their production. Then annual minimize fluctuations in Somebody is there speaking on, please mute yourself. Yes, rational utilization of country's water resource for optimum use of irrigation potential. So these are the basic salient feature of national agriculture policy. You should have annual growth rate of 4% price protection for the farmers, national agriculture insurance scheme should be launched.
then there should be rational utilization of not only land resource but also the water resources so we have to conserve all natural resources also that was also the basic feature of national agriculture policy then uh, these are different other to take care of the animal husbandry livestock sector also to take care of the assured market for the production then greater private sector participation through contract farming means the agriculture should be protected through contract farming these are the basic features then role of nap to strengthen indian economy the basic role is the agriculture sector should grow by 4% these were the basic role this is to achieve the growth in sustainable manner with equity that is all the farmers or the farming community when they will grow they have the increased production if they have increased production they have increased income increased living standards leading to sustainable sustainability and equity and there will be more increased export of agricultural products by increasing the production then it talks about the institutional and management reforms for the sector and about managing the risk means if the farmer is undertaking agriculture sector there are various risk attached because agriculture is basically depending upon the climatic factor so what to avert this risk what farmer can take steps how the government can help by providing which type of institutional support and managerial support this is all to be done by national agricultural policy see uh, by the with the support of national agriculture policy our country has been uh, attained a growth of 4.6% over last 6 years now you can see here uh, the industrial growth uh, that is through gva this is this has been taken 10.3 in 21 22 but after the covid there was still decline but still we are more than 4% that is 4.1 in service sector there is a great tremendous growth from 8.4 to 9.1 getting yes sir then in agriculture sector we are not achieving right now 4% we have been declining to 3.5% so these are the an economic short snapshots these are the minimum support prices that is the farmer what farmer price what farmer how much prices the farmer get for their production so you can see over a time period the msp has been increased means government has start supporting the farmers by raising the minimum support prices what is minimum support price this is the price suppose i have grown something and that is not sold in the market okay i have not get proper price of my production in the market so our government give assurance to the farmers that if this commodity is not sold in the market we will purchase your commodity at this price so government announced minimum support price suppose you are not getting the better price from the market in which you have invested or what you have invested suppose i have done production on i have invested 5000 per quintal on a crop that is rapeseed and mustard now i am not getting a price of 5000 per quintal from the market right yes sir so government has announced 5050 rupees as msp and they will be giving farmer 5050 rupees 5500 rupees and purchase the crop so farmer is mentally secure that जो भी वट एवर ही हेज डन इन्वेस्टमेंट ही विल बी गेटिंग बैक सो दिस इज द सपोर्ट गिवेन बाय द गवर्नमेंट राइट दैट्स वाई द नेम इज गिवेन मिनिमम सपोर्ट प्राइस मीन्स द प्राइज इज सिक्योर गिवेन बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड इट शुड बी लोएस्ट प्राइज कवरिंग योर कॉस्ट देन दीज आर द डिफरेंट components means national agriculture policy look towards sustainability food and nutritional security generation and transfer of technology input management so these are certain facts about sustainability 
how it will be looking towards sustainability, food and nutritional securities, and generation. Transfer of technology. For transfer of technology, we have ICR and state agricultural universities who, who initiate new varieties or new uh, ideas or new cure new insecticides pesticides for the production of the crop so these are just given to state and icr agriculture universities then input management is done in our country through seed corporations for the seed the state corporations so these are the name of the agencies that look forward towards the input management then incentives for agriculture is what what incentives are given to agriculture by the government as their support so first is removal of distortions in the incentives means if trade is taking place between different countries or different place so there are many trade barriers that is you can't trade if you have uh, amount less than a certain defined form so this is trade distortions so it means free trade has been announced then improvement in terms of trade with manufacturing external and domestic market reforms has taken place then uh, i have taken a study on agricultural policy in south africa that focuses mainly on water land use and biodiversity okay regarding water new approaches to irrigation development and management were designed to ensure the efficient use of the water in agriculture and it more equitable distribution will be adopted means they focus mainly on the land and water use resources and conserving the biodiversity so there are agriculture in south africa contributes uh, there are small farmers there are large farmers and they have uh, there are many factors that hinders and favors the agriculture development there is a case study also so contribution of agriculture to south africa economy here you can see the contribution has been now it has been increased in many sectors see in the agriculture sector this is not so clear in manufacturing sector it is 18.1 now it is 18.2 in agriculture 3.2 here but here is 16.5 earlier so there has been increase in the share of uh, contribution of agriculture sector in uh, uh, SA economy. Then food security refers to availability of well-balanced meals on a regular basis. So South Africa is also uh, faces many problems in achieving this food security, but still now it is a be in better place. So there are many institutional supports like WADA, CORAF, ASRDCA, FARA, NARI, and RMCA. You, do you know any name of these? Earlier, do you know any name? Whatever name I am telling here, do you know any name before? No. So these are the research institutions. Like we have ICAR. So you are having WADA, CORREF, FARA, and NARI. Most of the project programs have R&D components in the project so these are the agencies that undertake various research and development projects in africa need to work uh, closely with poor farmers and development partners to conduct research for developments so these are the different agencies now come to marketing price and trade policies is it clear till now so we'll be moving, moving towards next policy. NAP is clear. Any problem? Everything is clear, vanished. Yes, my everything is clear. So can I know what is MSP? It's clear. What is MSP? MSP. Minimum support price. Yes, sir. What is MSP? Minimum support price. Not getting. Can you tell about MSP? Mute. You have muted yourself. Okay. 
Okay, come to marketing price and trade policy. In this policy, we have different institutes or organizations carrying various functions like in India, we have directorate of marketing and inspection that undertake the marketing policy. So these regulate various marketing procedures. So regulation of agriculture market is basically done so that the farmer can get a better price and eliminate uh, the uh, the eliminate uh, whatever he whatever the middlemen uh, middlemen take advantage of them reducing marketing charges and providing facility to producer seller in the market. So major thing that are taken was construction of ruler go downs, marketing reforms, small farmer, egg business consortium and NIAM. The basic objectives of regulated market is to prevent the exploitation of the farmer by overcoming the handicap in the marketing of their products. To make the marketing system most efficient and effective, most effective and efficient so that the farmer can get better by. So basic function of these regulated market is so that a farmer can get a better price of their produce. Okay. Ex prevent the exploitation of the farmers and there should be orderly marketing of agricultural produce. These are the basic objectives. Then we have price policies. In the price policies, the basic objective is to maintain an appropriate relationship between prices of food and non-food crops and also between competing crops means there should not be inflation in prices the prices should not be so high or so low there should be a appropriate prices should be there the farmer should get a appropriate prices and minimize the margins between producer price and consumer prices means whatever the middleman takes that margins or middlemen should be reduced to minimize the seasonal and cyclical fluctuations in the price of agricultural commodities. Means, suppose if there is uh, if there is a crop that grow in winter season and it is also available in off season. So to minimize their price fluctuations, means there should be no not too much hike in the prices due to the variation in season. So this is all about the price policy. Then to stabilize the general price level and to maintain the equilibrium between demand and supply of different commodities to avoid disturbance in the economy. So basic objective is that the farmer should get appropriate price and consumer, it should be available to the consumer at fair prices so that their living standard can be raised through the increased income. There should be equilibrium between demand and supply of various commodities. Then in our country, is it clear? Is it clear? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I dropped the question on the chat box. Are there universal uh, tools, uh, price control tools that can be used by any country? Or maybe specifically are India, because I know there are price control measures here in Nigeria, but I, I don't think it's working enough. So I dare so ones that are being used by can India. Can you state few universal tools in Nigeria? Can you tell? Oh, honestly, it's not obvious. We are only hearing it in news, in papers, but it's not effective. I can't see it on the field. I can't see it in the in Nigerian market. <laughs> Okay, can you name anyone? Can you name any tool? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you name any tool? Okay, yes, I can. I will name it in the chat box. Then you have, like in India, we have Agriculture Price Commission that undertakes the pricing of agricultural commodities. We have CACP, Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices, that was set up by the government in January 1965. 
these regulate this regulates the prices in the our in our country to advise the price policy of agricultural commodities like paddy wheat bajra maize and all there is a cacp that announces the prices then to recommend from time to time in respect of different commodities the measures necessary to make the price policy effective that is whatever decisions have to be taken regarding the price if the price is not appropriate then also they take step to announce to bring out the changes in the prices like in south africa we have competition commission uh, that undertakes the regulation of prices so in different countries we have different commissions regulatory bodies who undertakes the price control then come to trade policy have you given anything in chat box no right now okay then in trade policies we have uh, various exim policies that is export import policies that undertakes the liberalization in export and import of the commodities these are the schemes of special economic zones major tr trusts to promote agricultural export by setting excuse me so we have special economic zones major trust to promote agricultural export by setting up agro export zones and by removing export restrictions on designated items means we have developed a specific area suppose in in our country we get a good apple in himachal pradesh so we have developed a special economic zone that this zone is giving the highest production in apple so this is having a resource endowment of apple so you will be getting apple at a reasonable prices because of a lot production in that area so this is the way how we have specialized different states or different communities or different zones okay getting my point uh, yes yeah, I think I missed out. I missed out on uh, transport subsidies. It's part of the controls that are being said to be transport used. Transport subsidies uh, provided for export yes. of fruits, vegetable, floriculture, poultry, and dairy products. Means there are many uh, various subsidies also on transport also, like simplification of procedure to further redu reduce transaction cost, and widening of scope of market access initiative schemes. Like business center in India, mission abroad for focused market promotions of export. We have ma we have various schemes that not only help they are helping for developing the zone, but also helping but are also helping in the movement or export of various commodities. That's why this is given transport subsidy. That is, there are export promotion schemes are also there. 
then there are certain institutions that provide finance to the agriculture like in india we have cooperatives we have commercial banks regional rural banks and we have nabar national bank for agriculture and rural development that was established in 1982 to support the farmer in their farming so these are the institutional supporting agencies that help the farmers for their growth then see this is the earlier structure how Uh, this is the bank central bank or the bank at national level that is supporting different banks commercial bank cooperative bank regional banks and then we have this is three tier and two tier structure three tier structure means finance is available at state level at district level and at village level but two tier structure means the finance is available at only the district level and then village level so but now this system has been changed that is you are getting the long term loans uh, do you know the difference between short and long term loans anyone short medium and long term loans no yes or no i want to know lita whether you know short term medium term or long term loans or not okay the short term loans are the loans which you are recovering back in one year medium term loans 2 to 5 years is the term loan that is you have to repay back the loans within a period of 2 to 5 years long term loans are the loans that is you have taken for a period of 10 years so the example of short loans are crop loans because you are getting a crop within a 6 months you will be selling that and you will be getting income within a year so that's why these are short term loans medium term loans means you are taking loans for any equipment or any cattle or machinery that is medium term loans that gives the services over a period of 5 years or so and if you are taking loan for any building or land then that will be long term loans clear yes but are all these loans are they are they collateralized loans yes these are the regularized uh, loans that are given to the farmers according to their needs and the government take mortgage of something in return of these loans but now this is turned into the two tier structure this is two tier structure now it has been changed to single window system means you will be getting all type of production loans short medium and long term in the one under one umbrella and you will be getting marketing loans under the second umbrella earlier it was production earlier you having you were having production credit from here and investment credit from here but there was no role of marketing credit but now it has been changed to the production and investment credit under one window and marketing is also there in another window this is the new structure so at village level we have primary agriculture cooperative credit societies that provide the loans at district level we have central land development banks and we have commercial banks like sbi state bank of india like so for the other services these are the specialized bank branches like uh, farm clinics are there of indicate banks rural credit and development divisions are there so these banks help in the development of agriculture basically we have developed the regional rural banks suppose any commercial bank we don't have any branch of commercial bank in the rural areas so these regional rural banks are initiated for specifically for the rural areas where the commercial bank are not being reached so these are basically for the rural area that's why the name is given to regional rural banks those areas in which the bank branches are not being opened by the commercial banks so government has initiated that the farmer should also get the benefits of banking services and they have initiated the regional rural banks so the regional then we have nabard that is the central bank for agriculture this is nabard the basic function of nabard is 
to provide all type of production facilities, investment, marketing facilities to the farmers. Then we have another institutions like we have self-help groups, we have non-government uh, organizations like NGOs, we have panchayati raj institutions, we have corporate sectors for the development of the farmers. Suppose if the farmer cannot work individually, so the farmer can create a group, uh, can create, can work in a group that is known as self-help group. And these are authorized to get funds from the government. If you work in a group, then you will be funded by a government. So these are the certain organizational form of the farming, self-help groups and non-government organizations, NGOs. So there are certain attributes, then the people can voluntarily join them. The profit sharing is very simple. Whatever investment you have done, you will be getting the profit in equitable percentage. Then you have Jilla Parishad or Panchayati systems, corporate sectors. Then come to input use policies. Is it clear? Am I going right or fast? Not, not, not very fast. It's clear. Hmm? It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, then come well, to I have, a, I, have, I have a question in the chat box. Okay. on how financial institutions how do they recruit back uh, their money or what does how the do financial they, uh, work institution with do what does this financial institution do to stem bad loans or defaulters okay good question actually we have like cooperatives we used to take mortgage do you know mortgage Yes, we know mortgage. Uh, so either they can take mortgage or they can take hypothecations. Mortgage means they have to give their landed properties, immovable properties. And hypothecation means they can give their produce also. They can give their produce also to the government for the same. If they want the money, they can give some part of their produce at their warehouses and then get the receipts out of it or they can give any of their bond papers or any of their utensils to the government for as in security. This is how they get the loans. So they have mortgage securities, they have hypothecation securities. These are the different securities which they have to give to the government. Right? Yeah, I understand. Okay. There are certain organizations, see you can see here in microfinancing institutions we have the government doesn't take any uh, the government doesn't take any security they provide the loans to the farmers on behalf of their seeing the scenario we have microfinancing institutions NGOs certain working that doesn't take any security so reason behind we are developing various NPAs non-performing assets means because of non-recovery the government is also facing many issues Sometimes the farmer is unwillingly not able to pay. Sometimes they are defaulters. They are willingly not able to pay. Suppose if the people came to know that they will be getting a money without giving any mortgage, so take the loans on agricultural behalf. Okay. But later on, they use that they use that credit not for agriculture, but for their personal means. So they are the willingful defaulters of the government. So the government if government send a agent or auditor to visit their farm, whether they are, they are undertaking the agricultural operations or not. If they are not undertaking the agricultural operations, so they will be declared as willingful defaulter. And for, for future, uh, their future uh, loaning amount is cancelled out. Means they are the defaulters, they will not be getting any loans in the coming future. So their, uh, their, uh, their, what we say civil is being uh, blacklisted. So they are not eligible of getting the loan next time. This is how we deal with loaning procedures. Okay. Right. Yes. 
then input use policy we have different input use policies taking care of the problems of various inputs how availability uh, their availability and their problems and their importance then we have land use policies in the land use policies we take care of land degradation soil erosion soil salinity soil alkalinity and water logging then the objectives of land use policy were basically that how to utilize the land how to improve their fertility and productivity how to reclaim them how to manage them how to plan them under watershed basis and how to overtake or undertake them by without the adverse effect of exploitations that are being done by pollution and ecological dis disturbances how to protect them to this so these are the basic objectives that is the land to better utilize the land to uh, secure their fertility and productivity to reclaim their degradation how to plan the use on watershed basis and how to protect them from pollution and ecological disturbances then we have labor policy so we have studied input policy institutions institutional support from where they will get money agriculture now the part is labor what is because the labor is very important part in agriculture so basic is to provide them an environment so that they can grow better here they can get a good job opportunities then rehabilitation of the labor in close and sick units then improving their working conditions and minimizing the adversarial labor relationships that is the job that they are getting they should be getting a job security they should be getting good at working atmosphere they should be social security also means if they are getting certain income some part of their income should be ensured for future that they will be getting this much part deferred after their period of service so there are certain policies then we have water use policies after the labor we have water use policies in water use policies means the water of our country should be neat and clean it should be uh, good enough to maintain the human health so we have various uh, measures that are being taken to improve the quality of the water so supporting to production function that is here you can say that water uh, vital role for environment and human is linked to the five main functions first one is maintaining human health maintaining environmental health then supporting the production functions means like for the better development of the food you need a water for fuel wood for timber growth all you need is water so water play a active role in uh, both production and in also carrier functions carry function means the role of suppose transpirations of waste or natural erosions or degradation of land or global water cycle everything for everything you need water so objectives of water policy is efficient and effective use of water as a precious resource improving and safeguarding the existing drinking water supplies managing the water demand across the competing sectors and determining the environmental requirements and prevention of pollution so these are the water policies then agriculture investment policy where you will be investing how you will be investing that is the major part suppose we will be investing where we will be getting highest profit so this is the major decisions so agriculture should be so as to improve the quality of rural assets and enhance their productivity so national accounting system is there for this defining agriculture to include agricultural livestock products fisheries irrigation etc so in our country we have central statistical organization that maintain all the data of whatever what is the availability of land what is the availability of water what is the availability of various inputs so we have central statistical organization for this 
so that we can know what is the availability and what is the requirement further. So if there is any lackage or if there is any lack of availability, so government will be taking step according to the data that they have collected. So, uh, so national agriculture policy is basically to create a better environment so that the farmer can grow better in a better way. Farmer can get good market and they can have a rationalized tax structure. So, uh, for agriculture investment policies, the investment policy should be on agro processing industries. The government wants that the people should invest in agro processing. People, the government invest on researches, education, extension, and also the government basically invest on foreign direct investments and for developing their rural infrastructure. Means there should be better transport, there should be better communication facilities. So this is rural infrastructure. The major source of investment is this: agro processing, rural infrastructure, research, education, extension, and foreign direct FDI investment. So in Africa, I have taken certain case studies. In Africa, there is African Investment Forum that look after various investments. So there are private sector banks, insurance companies, private equity and venture capital firms are there. These are the basic investors and there are the government that take care. The head of the state and government, Ministry of Finance, Central Bank Governors, these are those who take part in the investments. Then we have, I have taken in last class, uh, that is implementation approach. So for implementation, somebody asked me to give a case study. So this is a case study on the implementation approach, that is participatory approach. So government has initiated uh, a participatory approach in the livestock development. And on the basis of this, they concluded that there is a technique of they have undertaken the 10 village exercises and then they have trained them about the livestock and resultant is they will be getting their doubled livestock production. Then you have another case study on soil fertility. So here you will be, now you will be able to know the what are the major roles of national agricultural policy to support Indian economy. Are you able to know what are the major roles of national agriculture policy to support Indian economy? So these are the few questions. These are the few questions by which you will be able to know what are the roles of national agriculture policy there are the salient features of national agriculture policy. What is the need of water use policy? What do you mean by regulated market? So after these lectures, you should be able to know all these questions. What is export, import policy? What is intellectual property rights? What is investment? What is CSO? What are the major policy changes for investment is agro processing? Have there any major changes in composition of agriculture investments? What are the major constraints to public and private investments? And so on. There are the list of questions. These are the references. So is there any query? Shall I repeat my slide? Uh, uh, okay, ma'am, please. W w uh, would, you, would you share these uh, case studies with us separately? Which studies these case studies? Maybe a PPT of. We will be sharing yes. the PPT later. So we can do when few the research session, When the session will be over, then we will be sharing you the PPTs. Okay. After the session, all the course will be completed. We will be sharing. All right. So I shall be just giving a review from the starting if you have any issue you can ask in between so we have studied national agricultural policy then we have studied marketing price and trade policy then we have studied input use policy in that is in this we have studied land water 
then we have studied investment what are the investment supports then we have studied institutional supports like commercial banks cooperative banks so this was the introductory part of nap what is all nap all about this is institutional reforms we have different zamindari system corporations research and development trade policy credit policies then we have studied the salient features in this you have to get an annual growth rate of 4% you have to protect the farmers from prices that the farmer should get a better price then farmer should get agricultural insurance then the farmer should irrationally utilize their resources then farmer should protect from the fluctuations of commodity so these were the basic objectives or features of national agriculture policy then these led to the various um, um, growth and development that is sustainable agriculture food security transfer of technology and input management so by nap we can do so much of functions this we have studied then for input management we have different agencies like for seed we have seed corporations then for farm we have state farm corporations then what are the incentives that are given to the farmers in agriculture sector now in, then we have the study of african countries then for marketing we have dmi as a directorate of marketing and inspection that regulate all the marketing practices then the prices is being announced by cac cacp that is apc is there then after apc we have cacp that announce the prices then the farmer should be getting a minimum support price the minimum support price example i have given this suppose the farmer is farmers has invested 5000 on a particular crop then if the farmer doesn't get even 5000 from the market by at the time of sale of the crop then the government give assurance to the farmer that the government will be purchasing their produce at 5500 rupees if he is unable to sell the production at at the minimum price so the government announced 5500 as msp minimum support price so government has announced this as minimum support price that is given to uh, to the farmer got my point yes okay so this is the basic thing in our country this is cacp that is commission for agriculture cost and prices that announces these prices okay then um, in south africa i have seen there is a competition commission do you have any idea about any other commission that undertakes the price regulation you can share with me i can also uh, get information from you it's not that teacher get information from the student student can also disseminate the same any agency that regulates the prices in africa like in our country we have cacp in your country i found this competition commission do you know any name anyone so in the coming class i will be asking you search get search upon so i have started uh, 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 hello doctor yeah 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 i think uh, we, from our end here i don't want to say uh maybe it's deregulated such that um, government uh, might not have a lot of influence in this uh, in this situation it's a bit deregulated everybody there are plenty uh, private equity or private invest investment firms that are playing on this uh, field so it's a bit deregulated that's why it is competition commission the name is given competition commission so the inquiry will examine whether there are any feature in the produce value chain which lessens impedes restricts or distorts the competitiveness of the south africa fresh produce product so there may be a commission that regulate the fresh produce there is a fresh produce market inquiry 
So I have seen this uh, thing in South Africa. I find out from net only. You can look upon this part. Okay. Then for trade policy, we have export import policy that was announced in 1992. This is for the liberalization of export and import to remove various trade restrictions, removal of all quantitative restrictions and decentralization of exports of farm products. This is the one objective. Then schemes for special economic zones then transportation subsidies are being provided for export of fruits and vegetables. Then widening of the scope of market access SS initiatives means certain centers has been developed like business centers has been developed for market promotions of export. Then de-reservations from small scale industry provisions are being taken on. So these were the important uh, features of Exim policy to promote the export import. Then we have institutional support to agriculture. We have commercial bank, cooperative bank, regional ruler banks. Main central body is NABAD, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, established in 1982. So these are the cooperatives banks, state cooperative bank we have at state level, at district level we have district cooperative bank, then at village level we have PACs primary agricultural cooperative societies that work for the village. Then we have single window system. These are the different banks. Then we have regional rural banks that work for a particular rural economy for providing the credit for the agriculture and life sectors for village industries, artisans, etc. For reducing the dependency of weaker section on money lenders so that they can also get benefit from these banks so that these banks if provide loans to the weaker section they will not move to the money lenders because the money lenders usually exploit them by giving the money at a higher interest rate so if they will be getting the money from the bank at lower interest rate then it would be better okay just hold just hold on Ma'am, uh, is there some problem at your end? So regional rural banks may you have to develop the rural economy so that the credit may be provided for agriculture sectors for developing agriculture industries to protect the farmers from the money lenders and so. Then you have self-help groups. In self-help groups you will be providing the microfinancing is provided to the farmers without any mortgage. Then you have NGOs, means the farmer can work in a group as NGO, as self-help groups. Then we have Panchayati Raj systems and in a village we have a Gram Panchayat that have authorities of developing various plans, how the farmer will be taking various agriculture operations, what amount of taxes should be collected from them. So this is Gram Panchayat, Panchayat Samiti and Zilla Parishad. 
So these are the functions of gram panchayat. Means those that may be called representative functions where the main role is to voice and represent the community opinion on matter of acting. It means whatever regulations is to be taken on agriculture is being decided by the gram panchayat here. So we have Sarpanch here, like we have head, then we have secretary. So in this we have, in a village we have head when secretary that undertakes various operations. Then we have input use, May we have studied about land use policy, water use policies. Then we have investment policies, where we should invest, how much we should invest. This is all about investment in Africa. Then we have case studies and we have few questions. And this is all about today's lecture. Is there any query? Do you want to ask something? Do you want to ask something? None from my end. Okay, I shall be showing you again the slides. Ma'am, so is uh, lecture today is completed? Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I am just showing the slide once again. Then I will be. Uh, ending it okay okay so you can just have a look again these were the things that we have discussed and this was the introduction you can have you can if you want you can take the pics also of these screenshots of the slides um, you can read later on so this is the scenario of agriculture in our country then we have a policy that we have discussed then we have discussed about different policies in brief that is agriculture is for agriculture livestock fisheries and prices to get the better prices to the farmer better storage facilities then for institutional reforms we have different systems like zamedari system we have gramin bank regional bank cooperative banks then for research and development policies we have ICR institutions that undertake various researches. Then for trade policy, we have export import policies. Then for credit policies, we have different policies. Now the objectives of AP and NAP. These were the objectives. Basic objective is that all the agriculture business should grow at 4%. There should be better employment. There should be better living standards. There should be conservation of resources. And then this is how it strengthens the economy. Well, it helps in sustainable development of agriculture, food and nutritional security, transfer of technology and input management. And then we have studied about a case study on South Africa. What are the different agencies, supporting agencies? how they help, help in the development of agriculture sector. Then we have studied about marketing. This is the marketing agency who undertakes various marketing regulations. Then price policy we have studied. We have APC or CACP that undertakes the prices. 
then in see in africa we have uh, competition commission then trade we have exam policies then institutional we have various institutionals that support the farmers or if the farmers are not able to work singly they can work in a group as uh, as an ngo or as in self help groups the support can be provided by cooperative bank commercial bank regional banks nabard these are the structures in how they will support the farmers how the banking structures can support the farmers in credit facilities this is how credit flows to the farmer through different banks or societies then we have we have studied about this ngos and self help groups then we have studied gram panchayat then we have studied about water policy then land policy then investment policies and then that we have the case studies and this is all about with references so this is all for today thank you from my side if there is any query you can share upon thank you everyone thank you ma'am okay is it clear yes